playing with Overkill F18C Hornet. Today I'm going to do something a little bit differently that I actually have never seen anybody do and I don't know if this is going to be valuable or not. It's a lot of information to take in for um, a, a quick video tutorial but I figured what the hell it's worth it the shot. So what we're going to do is going to go over all the warning and indicator lights in the aircraft you know um, like for example the warning panel down there I know many people don't know what a lot of things are. Um, there aren't a ton to go through. It's just a matter of, you know, I figure that it wouldn't hurt to, to take a peek around and, and see what we come up with. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right after it. So starting with, uh, the big man of the arrow, let's at least get to the warning panel here. And let's see if we can do something like that. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm just going to sort of work my way around all of these and hopefully you guys find this useful. So first off is a check seat. That's obviously the ejection seat needs to be armed. Um, and then FCS hot, the flight control computer and transformer or rectifier are undercooled due to insufficient avionics cooling in right hand equipment bay. So that's going to be this thing right here. Okay. Um, obviously fuel low, we know left gen, right generator. Uh, the left generator outputs has failed or is turned off. So that's going to be these two switches here. You got the left gen here, right sw switch here. Um, so that's going to be left gen, right gen. So either they're damaged um, and they're not outputting with the way they should or they're not turned on. Okay. And then the FCES is a function that has been lost in one or more uh, axis of the flight control electronic system. So for example, um, if you lost the ability to uh, pull up on, on the vertical stable or horizontal stabilizers, right? If, if they will no longer lift up, okay, you'll get an FCES warning. Okay, the Gentai, the Gentai switch needs to be reset. I talked about this one in the first episode, um, but it just to refresh it, it's this guy right here. So what we do is lift the cover up, flip the switch from norm into reset, and then just flip it back, put the cover back down, and your Gentai switch will uh, warning or Jesus, your Gen Tai warning will go away. There we go. Hey, got it out. APU ACC or it's APU accumulator pressure necessary for engine starting is insufficient. So again, that would lead to an issue with the APU. Some of these you'll probably never see unless you have um, random system failures turned on. So I mean, if, if you go that die hard, even I don't go that die hard, um, you might get one. And then battery switch, that just means the battery's turned on. Okay. Um, all right, so let's let's move around here a little bit, and let's come up top. Uh, there we go. Oh, you know what? There's one more under here. The hook uh, indicator light just means the hook is in motion. Okay. And coming up here, spin recovery. This means that uh, the spin recovery system is active. And then lock down us right there. Lock down us. Lock down us. That's that's good. Good grammar. Okay. So starting up at the top here, okay, we have recorder on, which means the flight recorder is on. If you see AI, okay, these are all uh, notification lights is what these ones are. So the down below is the warning panel. These are just notification lights. So the, again, recorder on um, for the top one here. All right, so that's just the flight recorder. AI, an airborne intercept radar locked to aircraft. So you're being locked up by an airborne aircraft. So another another airplane. I don't necessarily that think that means enemy. It just means you're being locked up by an aircraft. Okay, CW, um, aircraft illuminated by continuous wave radar. So this means um, either you've been locked up or for example, um, a ground radar like the um, uh, a search radar, not necessarily a SAM radar, but like a, a early warning radar. Okay, that would be one that has locked you or that ha is tracking your aircraft. Um, dispense, countermeasures dispense program is active. So we'll get into that when we get into the countermeasure systems, but you have a bunch of different programs you can select based on the scenario. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to try to go into too big of detail on that, but it just means that you've triggered the countermeasure system and, and, and it's active. Okay, it's actively dispensing. And then SAM, this one's obviously uh, pretty black and white, but, you know, surface to air missile tracking, radar locked to aircraft. Light is solid when the air, when the radar is tracking and flashing when it's guiding a missile. So solid light, um, a, a scenario I'll throw out for you here. Solid light comes up. I check my EWR. I see SA-11. Okay, so SA-11 system has me locked up. 
once that light starts blinking, it's tra it's the radar source is uh, guiding a missile. So I've been fired on. Okay. And then AAA, um, for those of you who don't, I'm sure you guys have all heard the term AAA, anti-aircraft artillery, fire control radar is locked onto aircraft. Again, steady light for all radar directed AAA, except for the ZSU-23-4, in which the light will flash um, at uh, once you've been uh, tracked on or, or fired on. Okay. Um, so let's see here. What else we got up here? We have the APU fire system. So this is a warning or an extinguisher light. So you would actually push that if this starts blinking at you. If this illuminates, it means the APU is caught on fire. You need to push that to engage the fire extinguisher. And then here is the right engine fire warning and extinguish light. So again, this light illuminates. Your right engine's on fire. You need to push this button to engage the suppression system. All right. Let's move to the top of the canopy. Oops, I do that all the time. I don't know why I do this to myself all the time. Uh-oh, you know what happened? I think I lost track with the game. I hate it when it does that. Uh, this is why I fly VR. Okay, not a big deal. We'll get around it. So let's see here. Up here we have the lock light. It illuminates when radar has locked a target. So when you have locked a target and single target track and target is within R max range. Okay, so you have a couple of different range settings. So the lock light will illuminate when you've locked a target up and you are at the maximum range to shoot your missile at them. Okay, then you have the shoot light. And this one has a couple of different indicators. A steady shoot light indicates that a missile is within R max range or that gun target is within a firing solution. So, oh, and my track IR decided to come back. Don't ask me why. So real quick, I'm going to recap that. So a steady light indicates um, that the a missile uh, or that you can employ a missile at maximum range. So if you're going to fire the AMRAM, you're at the maximum range to employ the AMRAM. Okay. Or if you are in gun modes, so you're in a merged very close fight. Um, the enemy target is radar locked and is within uh, firing range of the gun and you have a firing solution. So basically optimal parameters to actually shoot the weapon at him. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense. I know I sort of garbled that. And then a flashing light indicates when a, that a missile is within the RNE range. So no escape missile range. So RNE is you have closed the distance between you and your bandit. And you, if you fire the missile, I mean, there's always a chance, right? But what it means is that the the likelihood of your enemy evading the tar or evading your missile is very very low. Okay, it's very unlikely that they are going to be able to dodge the missile. Doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means it's unlikely. Okay, they can't turn around and just run away from it. That's for sure. All right, and then finally the strobe light right here. Um, I'm not sure why it doesn't illuminate when the test switch is on. Maybe it's flashing and we just paused at the right moment. Um, but the uh, strobe light flashes when a missile shot is valid. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Let's move my camera down. Now it's cooperating. Move over here to the left side. Left side. Strong side. Sorry. Anybody who caught that movie reference, you guys are cool. All right. So moving to the left of the HUD here, we have our AOA indexer. We've talked about this previously, but we'll go over this just a minute. So donut means that you are on speed. I'm not going to go into the degrees and everything like that. They, there are certain parameters that make each light light up. I'm not going to go into that because I think, again, just sort of information that you're not likely to remember. And it just adds more confusion to the brain. So things to remember. Donut means you're on speed. You're right where you need to be. Landing gears flaps down. Nose is trimmed up where it needs to be. You're set for landing. Green light means you are slow, okay? If you only see the green light, you're very slow. You need to accelerate, pitch the nose back up, get it trimmed into the E-bracket. Red light means you are fast, okay? If you see just a red light, you are, or red light, you are very fast. You need to slow the damn aircraft down, okay? Get, again, get your uh, self trim back on the E-bracket and slow the aircraft down. If you see a donut with either one of these, it just means slightly. So in this case, slightly slow if we saw orange and green if we see orange and red we're slightly fast okay it just means minor correction needs to be made on the throttle okay not too big a deal all right coming down a bit here we have our master caution light this will illuminate and uh scream in your ear when you have a master caution you simply depress to clear the uh warning tone and then of course just like the opposing side we have the left engine fire suppression system this will illuminate if the le left engine is on fire depress it to um um 
Jesus, use the suppression system. Okay. All right, go no go. Uh, these are um, responses to a bit test. Go light means the bit test was good and you're good to fly. No go means the bit test had a failure. Okay. Um, and this is for the ALQ 165. Um, so part of the jamming system. Okay. Then we have the left bleed, right bleed. Okay, left engine bleed air valve is automatically closed due to a fire or air bleed test switch or bleed air leak or fire has been detected in the left engine. And so it's the same thing, going to be the exact same thing with the right engine. So basically means you have a problem with your bleed air system. Now this, again, could mean you have an engine system failure, could be the test switch. There's a couple things that could cause it. Speed brake, pretty uh, short and sweet. Uh, we've seen this one, you know, a couple times up when we've been flying in the previous videos, but it means your speed brake is extended. The standby ALQ-165 is set to standby on the ECM electronic countermeasures panel. So if we come down here, oh, damn it. I'm a dumbass. Woo, that guy right there. So if you turn this rotary up to standby, that standby light will illuminate. How illuminating. You guys see what I did there? Anyway, moving on. L bar, launch bar malfunction, nose gear cannot retract. Launch bar can only be extended with the weight on wheels. Okay, <clears throat> and if we get a green L bar like this guy here, the launch bar is extended with weight on wheels. So all is good. You guys are seeing a pattern here with the colors. Okay, wreck indicates aircraft is being illuminated by a threats radar. So much like the indicators, the notifications we get on the right-hand side and left-hand side, wreck means you are being painted by a radar. So pay attention. Uh, chances are something unfriendly is coming your way. All right, XMIT, lit when ECM jammer is transmitting. Okay, and for you guys, just understand ECM, electronic countermeasure, jammer. Okay, it's a radar jammer. Okay, that's the purpose of the jammer. And then finally, ASPJOH, ALQ-165, airborne self-protection jammer is overheating. Okay, so time to turn it off. All right, moving on down here. We've got a couple more that are in the area here. You know what? Let's see if... I'm wondering if these lights illuminated. It doesn't look like it, but you know what? They're also not powered on. Let me check something real quick. And of course that didn't work. I tried. All right. Yeah. So let's do this. It's going to take me a second. So bear with me. Let's unpause that. And then we get good. Ah, got it. Okay. 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 All right. So coming down here to our EWR panel, ALR67 panel. So obviously the power button here turns it on and off. Pretty simple there. But this is where it gets interesting. The display push button, when pressed, limit light on. <clears throat> display push button comes on and emitter display is limited to the six on and emitter display is limited to the six highest priority emitters. So if your EWR page, which this is the HSI, don't follow my mouse, but if you have your EWR page up here and it's just flooded with radar contacts, right? You've got bandits, you've got friendlies, there's just radar sources all over the place. If you hit the display page, if you just hit the, the I'm going to start over. If you hit the display button and the limit light is illuminated, which is just above display, um, it will limit the number of um, objects on your EWR page to the six highest threats. Okay, so pretty handy if you've got a flooded EWR. And then the special button is uh, not applicable for DCS World, doesn't actually do anything yet. Offset, this is a cool one, I like this one. Again, this is extremely handy if you have a bunch of targets out, if you have a bunch of radar sources that are out there, whether, you know, you let's say you have, you know, six to 10 enemy fighters out there, friendly fighters, AWACS, you have ground radars, right? And what happens is they get really stacked on top of each other, especially based on the scale, right? So if we hit the offset button when pressed, the enable light turns on, an offset push button switch comes on. Overlapping symbols are separated to make it easier to read. Now, the thing to remember, so give you guys an example here. If we had four bandits out in front of us, okay, they're flying in formation. They're gonna be stacked on top of each other like in a big way. So what will happen is if we hit the offset button is it will break it into one, two, three, four. Now, the thing you have to remember is at that point, what you do lose is accurate bearing to the aircraft because it's spreading them out so that way you can read them. But 
it's going to make their heading or their bearing to your aircraft look incorrect. So pay attention to that. When you hit the offset button, you are not getting accurate bearing. Okay. And then finally, last one is the bit test. Um, nothing real big in there or fancy. Nothing, you know, to really write home to mama about. Um, let's see here. I think we got everything, didn't we? Uh, is there anything that I missed here? Um, of course, down here you have your flaps indication lights half and full. Okay. Uh, yellow flaps is a warning. It means that the flaps have been uh, raised by the flight control system, but the switch is still in a down position. So an example would be I take off at full flaps or half flaps, whatever it may be. Um, and I forget to manually flip the switch forward. Now the FCS computer is going to bring the flaps up to prevent damage, but this light will illuminate letting you know, Hey, your flap switch is down in the half position or, or in the full position. Obviously you have your nose left, right landing gear positions. These are your, uh, jettison store selection switches, which when they're illuminated, that's the store that is selected. Um, coming up a bit, I need to recenter that. There we go. Let's zoom out cause we're in way too close now. Um, okay. <clears throat> oh, I didn't want to do that. Damn it. Fail. Okay, let's try that again. Helps when I hit the right button. So here we have our fire extinguisher um, system. We have the ready and discharge light. Uh, ready and discharge indicates that the system is ready and active. And then we have our air to air and air to ground lights. Pretty self-explanatory there. It means you're in air to air and air to ground mode. And I think that's it obviously green apu light means the apu is powered on ready you can begin starting the aircraft we went over that in the startup tutorial but i don't think i missed anything all right guys so yeah um like i said not i, I hope this is useful i don't know if this is sort of just garbled information that really is never going to be used but i figured what the hell you know it, it didn't hurt to try it um <clears throat> I was kind of curious why that light didn't come on. Uh, must only do it when you uh, weighed off wheels, I bet. But anyways, um, hit that like and subscribe button, guys. Leave your questions, comments in the fields below if I missed anything or misspoke on anything. Like, for example, I wasn't 100% sure on these guys. I had to do some digging and try to find it, and the answer I got was sort of vague, so I hope I understood that correctly. Um, but uh, let me know, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. The next one, we are starting air-to-ground combat, so uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. We'll talk to you soon.